I don't have punches. I got some hugs. <laughs> uh, I used to box, as you know, before just to kind of go make a profession out of it. So I quit that punching a long time ago. Only the devil. <laughs> I was thinking here this morning, eating these, watching around the table, these different ones. How they're they eat. The, some of them had eggs, and some had. Uh, pancakes and sausage and so forth uh, and yet we're all human <laughs> strange isn't it we'd be all human and have such a variety of eating I think that's just the way it is in our religious thoughts yeah. they, we are some here said it belongs to four square and some assemblies and some this that but after all we're all Christians you see it's just uh, that's the way it is and um that was Brother Courtner I was trying to think about from the four square. Brother Courtner, is he still with him? Courtney. Courtney. He's a sure fine man. Eating pancakes. I have a little story on that. I know it's sad. Well, it might not go good right now, but we understand. I, I love to fish, and I love pancakes. And so I was up in, way up in New Hampshire. I've been trout fishing. That's kind of the home of the little brook trout. I was packed in about two days with a pack on my back. It was way high in the mountain. And I, I would catch them, you know, when I got two or three to eat, turn the rest of them loose, just love to catch them. So I, there's a, uh, some willows back behind me, moose willow that was catching my fly all the time. I had a little pup tent, and I thought, well, now the next morning I'm going to get up early and go down there and cut them willows loose. So, oh, there's just trout just playing all under that, you know, where the water washed out, you know, back under the bank. Some nice ones. And I'd catch him, play with him, and jerk him in real quick, you know, keep him killing him, and then turn him loose again. So I thought, oh, I was having a real time. And so I went out there early that morning. I thought, this is about two of them brownies for breakfast will be just about right with some pancakes, you know. And so uh, I get it already mixed up because I can't mix it, you know. <laughs> I, I can't boil water without scorching it. So I, <laughs> I've just got that. And uh, so I got up there, and I got my fly line Tuck off about daylight, cut those bushes and caught me a couple of fish and then turned some loose and hurt a couple and I brought them back. <clears throat> On my road back is, uh, you brother in the hunt, you know what it is for a little black bear to be prowling in the district. It's a little old sow bear there with two cubs that got into my tent. Honest to goodness, they had, they just tore it to pieces. And there they was, I heard something raking. I looked over and here sat this old mother sitting there. These two cubs had just tore everything I had up. I know I'd have to go back. It isn't so much what to eat as what to destroy. And um, so I had a little axe in my hand. I had an old rusty pistol laying back there, but it was in the tent. And so she'd, and there, oh, uh, Mother Bear will kind of charge you anything, will you know, if you're bothering around where they got the cubs. And I kind of kept my distance, and I see a tree where I could get into it right quick. I wouldn't want to hurt her and leave two orphans in the woods anyhow, you know, so... I had this little old axe in my hand, so I said, uh, get out of there, and she turned. Well, she, instead of coming to, to me, she run off, and she cooed at these cubs, you know, and one of the cubs tuck out far. The other little fellow had his back to me, he's just sitting like this. Well, I thought, why didn't you go, little fella? And she kept cooing around to get that cub to come. He wouldn't do it. Well, I moved around so I was, uh, what's the little fellow so interested in he won't go to his mother? And she run back a little piece like that, and I watched my tree. <laughs> so she, uh, she, uh, uh, she's going towards the cub or to get him to come on. And she's afraid to get close to me, and then she's afraid to get to the cub. And she uh, cooed around two or three times and then went back to her other cub. And this little fellow was just sitting there doing something. And I wonder, what in the world was he doing? So I kept watching my tree, getting around sideways. You know what that little fella done? I had a bucket of molasses there for my pancakes because I like, I'm a, used to be a Baptist, you know, and I don't like to sprinkle them. I like to really baptize them, pour it on them. But I had a nice bucket of molasses about this big, and that little fella got into this bucket of molasses. You know how they like to And he had the lid off of it and had hugged up in his arms. Of course, he didn't know how to eat it. And he's socking his little paw down in it. Licking it like that, you know, like that, licking them molasses. Oh, uh, that's last of the pancakes and molasses. I saw that. So I said, get out of there. And he wouldn't uh, listen to me, you know. 
And after a while, he turned around and looked. He couldn't get his eyes open. My lash, you know, pulling his eyes back and forth like that. Cutest thing I ever saw without a camera, you know. And he was molasses from the top of his head to the bottom of his feet. And I stood there and laughed at my side. So I said, that's just like a good Pentecostal gathering. <laughs> that's right. Get your hand in a honey bucket, plumb up to your elbow, and you start licking, you know. There's no condemnation and no fear. <laughs> Strange thing, after I got him away from there, he got to all the molasses, he finished them up before he left. And he run out there to where his mammy and little brother was, and they started licking him. <laughs> That's the way we hope this meeting turns out. <laughs> Rest of them try to lick some of the honey. You know what I mean? <laughs> That's a rude way to introduce yourself, isn't it? But... Uh, that's the only way I have of doing it. You know what I mean? And I'm sure you understand it that way. It's such a grand privilege to be here with you, brethren, this morning. And to know that, that you sponsor me under difficult. Uh, of course, if you know if he reveals to me on the platform, he, uh, under, you know what I mean. Under difficult, you do it. Many times among the meetings, I don't know why, but sometimes people has got the wrong opinion of what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to break down a barrier to make all men that's Christians brothers in Christ. See? And sometimes that way I wrap down on organization. It isn't that I'm against an organization. See? Not at all. My, I didn't join any because I felt if I stayed in the breach... I could have more influence than I could throw what little influence I can on one certain group of people. And um, I'm very uh, zealous of the Pentecostal move. I was a missionary Baptist minister. When I seen this, this was it. And ever since then, I've been very zealous of the people. I love them. And then, long ways from being a historian, but from reading a bit of history and finding out that it's usually the the organization that that when it becomes so organized till it can't recognize the next man God just lays it up on the shelf doesn't use it anymore now I don't want our groups to be like that I, I think organization is a wonderful thing it, it keeps a good clean brotherhood and you know it's, it serves its purpose but I, I always want them to a place to one could put his arm around the other and, you know, I mean, have fellowship. As old brother Bosworth said to me one time, the godly, saintly old man, many of you know F.F. F. Bosworth. He said to me, he said, Brother Bram, you keep speaking of fellowship. You know what it is? I said, I think so. He said, it's two fellows in one ship. <laughs> so I, I thought that was a very good expression. Two fellows in one ship. Then there's room for all of us. If I seen... Our brother here, some brother, going down a swift river in a little boat that I know that boat wasn't going to make the riffle. Okay. Now I begin to scream at him. It isn't I got something against the brother. It's love that makes me do that. See, it's the boat that he's in. It won't pack him. See, now when organizations, I think if the organization would organize and then end their doctrine with a comma. Instead of a period, this is this and this is that and that's all of it. If they just make a comma, we believe this plus as much as the Lord can add to us. Mm -hmm. That's where Luther made a mistake, justification by faith. That was it. Wesley made a mistake, but sanctification, second work of grace, and refused to see, receive the Holy Ghost when he come in. If you end it with a comma, all right. So you see, God is so great, the tent stretched over us all, and we eating different foods dressing different, look different. We are different. Yes. But God is a God of variety. Amen. He isn't a God. He isn't a Sears and Roebuck Harmony house. See, he, uh, God is a God of variety. Look out here. Big mountains, little mountains, green trees, deserts, white flowers, blue flowers, pink flowers, red flowers, red-headed people, black-headed and, and gray-headed and then none at all. <laughs> See, He's a God of variety. He, I believe he, uh, he likes it that way. That's the way he made it. I think that in our organizational life, 
that God has it that way. I'm a southerner. The big boss up here says this nation, what they say is all right. I think in the segregation condition of the South. Some of them said to me one time, said, Brother Brandon, being a southerner, what do you think about segregation? I said, it's not for me to say. The boss, uh, government, said, let it be what it is. Permit them to marry and so forth. I said, that's that's up to them. As an American, I, I abide by the laws. To me, they ought to leave it the way God had it. He made a white man, black man, brown man. He's a God of variety. Let him stay the way God made him. That's what I think. If I was a black man, I'd, I'd, want, to, I'd want to stay in my class of people. If I was a, uh, a Chinese, yellow, I, I, I want to stay that way. Then that I'm Anglo-Saxon white, let me marry amongst the white, teach my children the same, and just stay the kind of a flower and a color that God made us at the beginning. After all, He's the one that made it. If I belong to the assemblies of God, I'd be assemblies of God. If I belong to four square, I'd be four square, see. But I'd always want to reach my arms out for each one, see. Get them all together, see. That's it. Fellowship one with another. That way I've been misunderstood. Sometimes I had a tape got out here not long ago about serpent seed. Uh, that caused a great conflict. Sorry those boys let that out. That was in my, in my, they are not with me no more. But uh, sorry they let that get out. And uh, after all, if it got out amongst churches, I understand that ministers are shepherds. They're watching their flock forever. And if they don't do it, they're not good shepherds. That's right. That's right. See, they, they got to watch their flock. And so that the Holy Ghost has made them overseer. There's many things that's been spoke, uh, different ones. Everyone has his idea about things. We have a right to that, see, to our ideas. But that, I, I would, sure wouldn't let that got out is my own idea. Uh, about uh, what I thought in the scriptures of, of uh, that it wasn't apples that Eve eat that caused the sin. And at the, from that, oh, it seemed to cause a sour biting down amongst some of the brethren. I'm, I, I wish it hadn't got out. Because, see, I, I'm not out here to try to hinder my brethren. I'm out here to try to help my brethren. I'm working for one purpose. And I think we're all trying to do that. And the assemblies and in the, the four square and the oneness and whatever they are. See, they're all brethren. And we ought to be for, trying to make one achievement. That's the kingdom of God. See? And as many souls as I can gather with my net and stand up there, I want to put it with yours and yours and all the rest of them. There's where we're going to and that's where we're working for is up there. And uh, you realize 15 years on the fields with the brethren... There's bound to be little things come up and difference of ideas. Here we are sitting here this morning as much in harmony as man could be, I suppose. But let us sit here a little while and begin to talk. First thing you know, there'd be some brother say something, but the other might disagree with him a little bit. Uh, it takes real man, real Christians to withstand that and still feel like a brother, you see. Yeah. You've got to have it in your heart. You just can't, you can't, you can't deceive by that. If you say you are and you're not, that's what help, that's what that's what does the hindrance. You got to be clean and clear with it, you see. And um, we uh, we would be different. Like if uh, take a certain if a brother was out somewhere and get amongst a certain class of people. A brother was testifying to him this morning. He was called to the ministry when a little boy, and then he fell. He said, and I and he said, but. Then he came back with more of a call to preach than ever before. You see what it was when he became a Christian, he got in the wrong environment. Mm -hmm. See? And that environment influenced him. See? And you just keep holding around that kind of environment. You, you, it influences you. I hope you're reading between the lines what I'm saying. See? It influences you in that environment. And the first thing you know, you become a part of that environment. You go into it. And uh, just like a good, clean man that's clean and moral, and he begins to associate with a bunch of people who is not. See, you take up the spirit of that. Everything is governed by a spirit. Nations are governed by a spirit. When I go into different nations, see the way they act and do, you can see it's the spirit of that nation. I was going to the market. Excuse me, sisters. I was going to the market with my wife the other day, and... Uh, we thought it was something strange. We seen a lady with a skirt on. 
They're nearly all naked, you know, with them little shorts on. And she said, uh, she, and she said, uh, uh, I know many of them there singing choirs and, you know, just fine, you know, the celebrity of the city. And my wife is a, one of these old-fashioned girls, you know, and she said, I wonder why they do it. I said, honey, it's a spirit. See, it gets on, see. It's a spirit. Them women don't mean, they don't realize what they're doing, see. They don't mean that, but it's a spirit that gets on them. And the first thing you know, they just start a little bit and a little bit more. And sin is so, uh, what would I say, uh, it's subtle, yes, yeah, subtle, just so subtle. It comes in, it's so beautiful, and it's so subtle, that's the way it takes you. Well, I think many times that good, sound-thinking man comes into an organization and you get sometimes that you get a place in there that's uh, kind of a, uh, begin to come we are the group see and it isn't actually the brotherhood it's just a spirit gets among them see and uh, it don't give enough room for the next brother you see I, I think that's right and I find it in all and we know that's good so I am here my brethren to pitch in my net with you all to do everything I can for our, our lovely Savior Jesus Christ Amen. the Son of God uh, I, I don't have, uh, no, I'm not a preacher. I, uh, just to say a preacher like you, man, who are learned and called to that, I have a little gift that God gave me. And it's just like getting into a gear. I can't put myself there. I met a brother here this morning called Bacon, I believe it was, or ha Bacon, I believe it was, up there to India. He said he was here years ago when I was in the meeting. At that time, it was just a little phenomena of putting my hands on somebody and then would know what it was. Then, you remember I told you that he told me that it come to pass I know the very secret of their heart. Now, you watched the meeting. See? Now, that, that is true. But it, what is it? Where I lack in something, God perhaps knowing that I love the people and he just gave me something else to work by, you see. And I don't want, I, I want to make it for the whole body of Christ, everybody, you see. For, to try to influence everybody I can to serve the Lord Jesus. May be strange to some of the people, but I'm trying to encourage them, sit down and see it scripturally. If it wasn't the scripture, then don't believe it. No, sir. In the Old Testament, they had a way of knowing where it was the truth or not. If a prophet prophesied, dreamer dreamed a dream, they'll tuck him before the Urim Thundum. And then that's the breastplate on Aaron. And, and no matter how real it sounded, if them supernatural lights didn't flash through that Urim Thundum, they didn't believe it. See? Because it had to be the supernatural. And if the Urim Thundum didn't prove it, no matter how real a dream sounded or what the prophet said, it was wrong. Now that was in the Levitical priesthood. And that priesthood done away with takes away that Urim Thundum. But God still has a Urim Thundum. That's His Word. Yeah. 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 No matter how anyone sounds, sounds good or whether it sounds so fine, it would be the program. To me, it's got to flash on that Urim Thundum. It's got to be that Word. or it is. See, you know, God can do things. We've had all kinds of things going on. and No doubt, godly man, good man. But we like... A different things of sensations and blood and oil and everything. That might be all right. See, God can do that. I don't say he can't do it. He can do what he wants to. He's God. And I ain't got no business telling him what to do. He does what he wants to. But to me, let it be scriptural. And then I know it's right. See, let it flash on the scripture there. Then that, that's all right because I know he'll stand behind this. I don't know about the other. But trying to keep it that way the best that I can. And I... I never let my meetings get big or it could be that I'd have a lot of like uh, some of our precious brethren fine man like brother Oral Roberts when Oral and I first met he had a little ragged tent and I was over on one side of, uh, of uh, Kansas City Kansas and he's in Kansas City Missouri I got our picture standing there together he said do you think God would answer me for well there was a man smart intelligent great man of God good faith I said, Brother Roberts, just a young minister. I said, God will answer anybody's prayer. It'll be sincere. Here he goes. 
the other day. Such a precious brother. I was, had a meeting, businessman, Tulsa, and then I had a meeting down at the auditorium. And Oral came in and hurt his leg, and he called me out of the platform. I went and prayed for him. He said, you seen the, my building yet? I said, no, Brother Roberts, I have He said, well, why don't you go over and look at it? So the next day he slipped in around so he wouldn't be there. You know, I don't want a, a big man, a man like that. I know his time's precious. So I went, sat down in his home. I couldn't have been treated any nicer if I had been in my own home. Old Roberts, such a swell fellow. Tommy Osborne. Oh, my. They just don't wear shoe leather any better. That's all. That, he's just a, he's a precious boy. I was over in his place and all. Such a nice man. And uh, as they all claim it, I got started on the field first, and they seen it, and that's what made them go. I went over then, Brother Fisher, I was with his group in South Africa. He showed me around through Oral's building. Oh, look, such a mammoth place. Beautiful. If you've never seen it, be sure to see it. Oh, you've never seen anything like it anywhere in the world. I'd just been to Brother Tommy Osborne's and seen his great place. Hundreds of IBM machines setting, running. Human hands never touch the letters at all. Just run through, just like that. My money coming by the loads and dumping into a conveyor and going down. I thought, oh my. He has to have it. He Listen, that's a great work. And I stood out there on the outside. I thought, God, how grateful I am. Look here at this building here. About two and a half million dollars, I guess. The achievement of one little Pentecostal boy. What God can do. One little oaky out of a dugout down there. What God can do. Just goes to show. And I seen Tommy, Tommy Osborne, stand there in Oral's yard. I'd, there's a bunch of people, you know, how you waiting on the outside. And a policeman taking me through and showed me out the back how to get around where I could get the car. And Brother Fisher would go, go around, pick up, and come get me around the back. And I stand back there, looking at my hands behind me, looking at that big building, how beautiful. And uh, looking at the mayor in there, you know, they're reaching down hands. And I, look. I said, Well, I got something that said to me, well, What about you? I thought, and then the brothers said that my little ministry helped put them on the field. See, each one of them sit and tell me that. And I thought, well, I guess maybe why did, where, if I was out there, why didn't I have something like that? I thought I'd sure hate for them to come to my place. One little typewriter sitting at the end of a trailer and begging somebody to come help me to get the letters out. I thought, well, you see, maybe God couldn't trust me, see, Maybe if I'd got like that, well, I might not have been myself. And I thought, but well, I'm so thankful to God that He could find somebody that He could trust like that. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't want you to say nothing about. I don't mean this any different. But while I was standing there, I got to cry. I thought, well, Father knew it. I no education. Them boys, how lovely precious I just turned around and started walking back waiting for the car to come I still there looked at that great big building just as plain as I ever heard a voice it said I'm your potion oh that's that's all right. I'm your potion I said thank you Lord then with what little I have I'll do the best I can to put the potion that you give me to the kingdom of God now that's where I've tried to stay a little. I don't have nothing. We got some books, but they don't belong to me. They belong to Brother Gordon Lindsay. We just buy them on 40% that we can. And I have to give the man money to get back home on it since we come up the West Coast with these books. And many of them got ruined. Give them to people. And anybody wants them and they ain't got any money, well, they can have them anyhow. See? So I've tried to shun money. I never took an offering in my life. And I thought, what would I do if I had to sponsor something big? I, I couldn't do it. It's just, I, I just couldn't do it. That's all. So the great infinite God knew that. So what little I have got that He has given me, I'm trying to share it with you, brethren. 
See, you're the church. May we all just stay one. See? And, and just stay together as brothers. And let's share what we got with each other. See? That way, we're, we're in a great battle. And we're, we're battling sin. Not one another. Well, we're going to fight at one another, then, then Satan can sit back and just let us fight it out, see. But let's turn our, everything we got towards the kingdom and put our shoulders one again with the other. Start moving upward. And work for there because I don't think we got too much longer. I think we're right at the end of the road. Maybe it's just because I'm getting to be an old man that I think that. But I know it isn't that because I thought that all the time. I, I believe that we're at the end of the road. And let's pray and help and support. Now, there, Brother, Brother Robertson, they, they, they got... See, now, I don't, I don't want you thinking I'm saying anything against Brother Roberts. He's one of the finest men I ever met. Tommy Osborne, many, and Tommy Hicks, and those brethren are fine brethren. What I'm trying to say, you see, with... Now, Brother Roberts, I think, has a college education. He's smart, and he's... And God has just blessed that man in such a way he just got everything around him there to look. All of us people, if we, God has lotted us our part and lotted him that part, but all the parts make one part that yeah. goes to the kingdom of God. You see, we want to put ourselves together. Yeah. Now, if I try to separate myself from Brother Roberts, that would be doing the same thing that I've been talking about. One organization separating itself from the other. Yeah. Let's be one big group, you see. Yeah. Just one big group. Speaking of Christian businessmen, I've been with them. It's kind of been an oasis for me. And because at, at, uh, in letting them sponsor, the businessmen of the churches will come. And, of course, that kind of makes it look like it, the pastor almost has to do it, you know, on account of letting down before the congregation. But I told the businessman here not long ago, I said, Brother... Uh, I'm, as the brother said, I, I have never, never been hypocrite enough to pull a punch from anything. If it's so, it's so. If I say it, not with any hard feeling, but with love, I said. If you're a little boy or a little child was sitting out there in the street and you say, Junior, dear, if you don't come in, you might get hurt. That's not love. Real love will go out there and get him and shake him and make him sit off that street, see? That, that's real love, see? See? And that's that's what it is, brethren. I don't mean it for anything. You keep that in mind. See, I don't pet Junior. See, we we got to tell Junior and make him line up. See? Now, uh, the love of, of brotherhood, fellowship, together, working together, and just like uh, working agreements and so forth. That's what we're trying to do in the kingdom of God. Now. In this great time that we're living, where we're at the end time, I think I don't know how much time I got here. Just um, about fifteen minutes. Uh, we're working for life. We're struggling for life, and we're and in this life struggle, we find out that we're different, but we're the same. I find out that my finger is not my ear, and my ear is not my eye. And I, but I find out that they've got to work together to get the job done, <laughs> and that's what we got to do. You see, we got to work together to get the job done. And that's why I'm here, is trying to get the job done, not to do the job. I can't do it. I'm here to work with you, brethren, to get the job done. I think the possibilities and it's possible and probable too that right now something could take place right here that would send a revival through every one of your churches and you see it could do it now what little I have to do with I'm putting it with you brethren laying it up on God's great golden altar with our sacrifice and common grounds Jesus Christ there we're working I'm going to work with everything I can and anything that I if you see it, I could think I could do a little better. You just be at liberty to tell me, you see, and I'll sure do it. I'll do everything I can to work right with you, do all that I can for the kingdom of God. And then at the end time, then we all want to hear it say, It was well done, my good and faithful servants. Remember, this meeting here 
It'll be history in another five days. Yeah. Eh? And then it'll meet us again someday. So let's do everything we can to make it good. I just feel like I'd like to say a word or two here, if it's all right, just on a little... I want to, I, I want to quote his word once. And just uh, maybe just a little like a text. And I'll watch real close. Let's take St. John 5, uh, 24. If you want to think of it, it's one of my favorite texts. A handful and two dozen of eggs. <laughs> See, 5, 24. He that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life. See? Life. What a word. Life. What are we doing? We're... That's what we're trying to hold, life. That's what we're trying to find, life. It's the greatest thing there is, life. You're not long ago, I was sitting with my secretary on a little run to come up the house. We picked up an old piece of a fossil being in there. He said to me, he said, how old is that? I said, well, oh, perhaps chronologists say it be, or archaeologists say it be about several million years old. He said, I short human life is to that. I said, no, no, no. I said, when that's no more, I'll still be living. <laughs> I got eternal life, see. Amen. And therefore, and if we look around, I think, brethren, that we can notice that everywhere we see is life. Life. Uh, you look across here and you can see, a, maybe, say, you see an orange tree. It's expressing life in its own way. Here's a palm tree. It's expressing life. Here's the pine tree. It's expressing life. There's a flower, red one. It's expressing life. The uh, blue one standing by. It's expressing life. See our organizations? See? See? Each one expressing life. We notice a little flower. Let's take the, the, the significance of a little flower. It stands up there beautiful. and is serving a purpose. Serves it well. And when the frost hits it in the fall of the year, that's it. Young or old, it dies. That's death. Those little petals drop off and a little black seed drops out of it. Let's see whether God's interested in what we're struggling for. A little black seed drops out of it. And um, after a while then, it's as strange as it seems, God's so interested in that little life until he has a funeral procession for it. It is. The fall rains come, great big tears drop down out of the skies and buries that little seed. Is that true? Yes. Sure is. Yeah. Buries it under the ground. Long comes the winter freeze. Freezes over several inches under the ground. The little bulb dries up, freezes, gone. The petal drops off, gone. The leaf's gone. The little seed freezes, burst open. The pulp runs out. A poor little life that God made. Is it finished? Not by no means. Oh, no. See, the solar system controls botany life, the sun, S-U-N. And just as soon as that warm sun moves from around behind the earth and gets back around here, there's a germ of life somewhere in there that no scientist can find, but that little flower lives again. Yeah. It's served its purpose. It lives again because it's life. Well, if God made a way for the solar system to raise up again a life that served Him, what about the S-O-N when He comes? Amen. With Hallelujah. eternal life. And we have eternal life. We're going to rise again some of these days. Let's just serve our purpose well. Whatever we are, let's serve it. Whatever place God's put you, let's serve it. For the S-O-N is going to rise one of these days with healing in His wings. I want to come forth in, in the brightness and the glory of His resurrection. I want to walk arm in arm with each one of you up before His presence. Until then, remember, we're the little leaf on the tree. I like to hunt. I guess you see my face blowed up. I always wanted a Weatherby Magnum. Some precious, I wouldn't let no one, I couldn't afford to buy one. They're ex very expensive. Someone would have bought me one. 
There's a man sitting right here now. Would have bought me one. I couldn't afford to let him do that when I got missionary friends with no shoes on. I couldn't do that. Can't think of it. That's the reason I tried to give these pancakes to somebody this morning. I know what hunger is. I know what them people are suffering. I can't see wasteful things when you know that brothers that believe the same thing I believe are over there under difficult. I couldn't let them do it. Art Wilson give me a give Billy Paul a model seven uh, model seventy two fifty seven Roberts. Billy, my boy, is left handed. He couldn't use the right hand bolt. A friend of mine that runs a Weatherby company said, "Well, let me send that to Weatherby and have him reboard, make you." Weather it out of it. Said it wouldn't said it cost you about thirty dollars, cost me about ten. He did it. He didn't bore it right. First shot blowed all over my face like to kill me. Stuff about six weeks ago, just see in place there, knocked top of that tooth off where it went through there and then cut the side of my face. Three of them went right around there, sticking in the sinus glands and in the bone. Fifteen of them went right straight in behind the sight like that. Almost cut the sight in two. This goes to show. I got a message out of it. These shake hand conversions. That's what that was. See, if that gun had been started in the dies as a Weatherby Magnum, it would have helped the load. But it was tampered with and tried to be reborn. Of course, any gunman knows what happened. It had pressure this side. See, it blew it. That's the way it is with some of this shake hands religion. I believe in being born again. Amen. Go back to the beginning and die out and be remolded. See, if you don't, there's going to be a blow-up somewhere down along the road. It'll blow up on you when the pressure comes. So let's Hallelujah. hold the pressure. I was down in Kentucky with a friend of mine selling books here in the meetings. Mr. Wood, he's a Jehovah Witness. That was converted by a poly old boy. He's got with him married now. Leg drawn up under him. Maybe I get a chance to have him testify. He got saved and filled with the Holy Ghost. His brothers come. His father was a reader. They excommunicated him from all their being. One day his brother came in. I was home on vacation or resting. And he went out to his brother. He said, Banks, what? That's the one here. said, What in the world have you got tangled up with? He said, The bunch of fanaticism. He said, It's not a fanaticism. He said, Look at David's leg. He said, All nonsense. He said, Your daddy's raised you. raised us some kids not to believe them hellfire burning preachers and so forth like that said you shouldn't do a thing like that said what kind of a quack are you listening to said there he is out there in the field pitching hay call me in I guess it looked like everything but a minister and he said sitting there he said uh, I was talking to him I said how do you do very cold and different so a vision came just speaking I've done it right here three or four times since I've been standing here and I said you're a what'd you leave your wife for I'm two little boys he looked over to Banks as if his brother had told me about it I said don't look to him I said you told me that I said, what about night before last? Your wife's a blonde-headed woman. You was with a woman had arvin hair. That man knocked at the door and you went to the window. It's a good thing you didn't go. You got your head shot off. man had a pistol in his hand. He tumbled over on the floor. <laughs> he gave his heart to Christ and became saved. Now his whole family saved by the same way each one of them. And we were filled with the Holy Ghost. Then down we was hunting down in Kentucky. And this squirrel hunt. I like the squirrel hunt, just sport of squirrel hunting. We love them to eat. I trained my rifle at 50 yards for an eye shot. See, just at, at, at 50 yards. So we had a um, uh, hunting. It was very, if you ever hunted gray squirrels, you have, I guess, an oak, you home up there. There, You talk about Houdini being an escape artist. He isn't an escape artist at all aside of one of them. How quick they can get away like that. So it was real dry. You couldn't get the... Close to him, so he said, "There's a place down in, um, and uh, here an old man that we can hunt down the holler where it's damp. You know what a holler is? What we call a holler is a valley where the uh, uh, hills come down. Then you walk up through this place, you watch both sides of the hill. It's damp where the uh, water flows." He said, "But he's an infidel and one of the roughest in the country." He said, "Oh, he's awful." He said, "He know you being a preacher." He said, he, mm. "I said, well, let's go try." It. So we went down through ridges and over hollers and everything till we got back way back in the field. 
There sat a nice little house back there. An old fellow with a big old flop down hat, two sitting there, you know, on a tree. He said, there he is. So I said, you do the talking. So we drove up close. And he got out. He spoke to him. said, come in. You know how the Kentuckians, Southerners, said, come in. Sat down there a little bit. said, my name is Wood. said, I'm Banks Wood. said, I wonder if we could hunt. said, a friend of mine's down here. said, we've been hunting over here on the other creek. He said, it's still dry. We thought maybe... He said, what woods are you? Are you Jim Woods' boy? I said, yes. He said, Jim Woods is the honest person in this country. He said, any of him or his people, I've got hundreds of acres here. Help yourself. I said, thank you, sir. He says, all right for my pastor. He didn't even say that. My pastor to go with me. He said, you don't tell me that a woods has got low down enough to have to carry a preacher with him wherever he goes. <laughs> I said, yes. I said, I thought it was time for me to get out. So I got out of the truck, walked around. I said, how do you do? He said, and you're the preacher. Hadn't took a bath in two weeks, you know, and squirrel blood and whiskers that long. I said, yes, sir. I said, I guess don't look like one. He said, well, that part's all right. But said, you know, I'm supposed to be an infidel. I said, that's not much to brag about, is it, sir? He said, I said, right, not. He said, but the only thing that I'm, I'm thinking is, I thought, Lord, you ever help me. You do it now because I, I got something must happen. He said, well, the only thing I got against you, fellas, you're just barking up the wrong tree. Does anybody know what that means? A lying dog, you know, one barking at this tree and coons in another tree. You know. So he said, you're barking up the wrong tree. He said, you're talking about something. There's just nothing up there. I said, well, maybe that's to opinion. I said, maybe the dog sees something that you don't see. He said, uh, well, I said, there ain't nothing up there to begin with. He said, there ain't no such a thing as God. I said, well, of course, that's your American privilege to believe that. And uh, so there's no apple tree standing there. And, and uh, a lot of them falling on the ground. You know, it was around about the middle of August. And uh, yellow jackets is, you know what a yellow jacket is? Yeah. They're sucking around on them apples, you know. So I said, um, thought I'd better change the subject right quick, you know. So I said, uh, um, you mind if I have one of them apples? He said, oh, not at all. I said, the yellow jackets are eating them. So I got out and got a hold of one and just rubbed on the dirty overalls. <laughs> when you're in Rome, you have to be a Roman, you know. So I said, well, um, I took a bite of the apple and stood there a little bit. He said, yeah, that's the thing against you fellas. You're always, the only thing it is, you're just sponging off the people. Living off of charity. I said, yeah, that's true. We live by the arms of the people free will they don't have to come see they believe it and they support it he said well he said there is no such a thing I've never seen anything declare such things so I can look from up as far as my eyes can see I don't see no God see nothing else so blind you know and so uh, he said uh, I don't see nothing don't see no God I've been here for 76 years and I ain't seen nothing yet he said I'll say one thing there was one preacher one time about two years ago. They come up here to Acne at the Methodist campground. He said he's a feller from out in Indiana. He said uh, the uh, old lady Casshorn, I believe was her name. So lives up here on top of the hill right up yonder, and said she had cancer in the stomach. And said uh, me and my wife had been going up every morning. Said we couldn't put her on a bedpan no more. Excuse the sisters, but y'all. But said we just had to use a draw sheet, rubber beneath you know, pull for the draw sheet. Said me and my wife went up there every morning, every evening, and changed her bed and fixed her. Her and her husband lives up there, and said doctors who've been seeing her and said she'd been doctoring this cancer for about a year and said she got to a place that they didn't even come back no more, just staying alive on dope. Said this preacher from Indiana, he never was down in here before, and said. And they're uh, having a meeting up there. Said, "Is I guess there's close to 1,500 people in this uh, act. And it's a little bitty tiny. Well, I think the population is about 20. See, but they have a campground there. And so he said, uh, the second night there, when preaching, said he looked back in the audience and said to this woman's sister, called her by name and told her when she left home she took a little white handkerchief with a little blue figure in the corner of it and she had it in her pocketbook. She had a sister named so and so over here was dying with cancer." Come put this handkerchief up on her, and she'll get well. 
And so that night about 10 o'clock, so I thought they had the Salvation Army up on top of the hill. I never heard so much noise in my life. We thought the old lady had died. So Kentucky, they go to bed at 7 o'clock with the chickens, you know. And they, so then, uh, so they uh, said, uh, and that was Big Ben, you know. They took that handkerchief and went up there with that lady laid on. And he squall like a panther anyhow, you know. Up there. So he was up there and said, the next morning we went up to find what we could do to help him. Of course, way back in there, he couldn't get an undertaker in until morning, you know. So they went Went up there to see what we could do, wife and I, and said, when we got up there, so that woman is eating fried apple pies, sitting at the table drinking a cup of coffee, her and her husband. You know what fried apple pies is, half moon? See, you pull out the dough like a pancake and put the, you know what, you know what leather britches is? Le- le- leather britches beans? See, beans that you, you know, hang them up, let the sun dry them, and dry the apples, you know, the same way on top of that. And then take these apples and put them in this, turn them over like that and fry them, make what's called half moon, put sorghum molasses on top of them. They're really good. They're good. And they are, for sure. Are. So, <laughs> said she's eating fried apple pies. Her and her husband. And said she don't only do her own work, but she does the neighbor's work. Ever since then. Now, I wanted to know how that man knowed that. And Banks is looking at me. Start, shook my head, ain't like that. And he said, uh, I'd like to know. I said, you don't mean that's the truth. I said, you wouldn't believe a thing like that. Well, he said, I can take you up yonder and prove it to you. <laughs> see, now he was preaching back to me. <laughs> then, you see, <laughs> he said, I can take you up there and prove it to you. I said, oh, I'll take your word. See, I said, I'll take your word. He said, well, she's right up there. And if you don't believe it, just go up there and ask. And ask any the neighbor around here. Any of them can tell you about it. Oh, I said, I, you, you mean that's right? He said, it sure is right. Oh, uh-huh. Now you preach it back to me. You see, I just stood there a little bit. And I said, he said, I said, well, what, so, what, what was you want to see the preacher about? What was his name? So I don't know. He said, if I ever see him, I'm going to ask him about it. I said, yes, sir. Well, I said, I hope you do. And uh, he said, uh, well, he said, you know, he said, what I can't understand is what he is talking about when he could stand over there and never been in this country before and know that woman got that handkerchief and sent over there and laid it on that woman and told her exactly what was going to happen. And that's been two years ago, and she's perfectly well, said. And she, she's all right. So there she is. Doctor said she'd die at any minute. So they opened her with cancer and just sewed her back up, couldn't in the bath, done taking a hold of it. And so I said, uh, wrapped around her. And said, there she is. I said, well, that sure is strange, isn't it? And he said, sure is. I said, boy, that's a good apple. And he said, yeah, that's a good one. I said, that's right. I said how old is that tree? He said, young feller, all my 50 years, you know. He said, young feller, he said, I used to live up yonder on top of that hill. Me and my pappy and mammy and all of us lived up there. Where that old, old fireplace, the old log house. He said, pappy built this house and we moved down here. He said, when he died, I took it over and said, I've raised my family here. He said, I'm 76. He said, I planted that tree there about 45 years ago. And said, she's produced a good crop of apples for me ever since she started producing. I said, wonderful I said, that's that i said i noticed the leaves are all falling off that tree see my old mama used to tell me just give a cow enough rope she'll hang herself see so just to <laughs> tie your horse back on the end of the rope watch anybody get his foot over edge while you know so that's the way without any uh any, uh, I just have to depend on God. Just the simplicity of listening, just going the way He leads. You see, with, with no mental powers my own to cut them smart guys off. You know, you just have to let Him do it. You see. So He said, uh, "Well, He said, um, yeah, it's, the leaves are leaving." I said, "Now nah, that's a strange thing, isn't it, sir?" I said, "Here you are. Here it is, the middle of August. We have a, it's still hot, about ninety right then in the shade." And I said, the middle of August, without any frost or anything, and yet them leaves are falling off the tree. I said, I wonder what does that. Oh, he said, the, uh, the life left him. Oh, I said, I see. The life left him. Where did the life go? He said, down the roots, the sap. Oh, I said, it does. And he said, and I said, what does it do that for? I said, you mean that life ain't up in that tree in the wintertime? I said, oh, no, it'd kill it. The germ of life would be killed in the tree up there. So the life goes right down in the roots. Huh? I said, comes back up next spring, bring you another bunch of apples. Yeah. <laughs> I said, I don't want you to answer me a question. <laughs> I said, tell me, that tree doesn't have any intelligence. 
But there's some super intelligence that tells that tree that's coming wintertime. Get away from there and go back down in the roots and hide down beneath the dirt. Next spring, you've got to bring this guy some apples. And if it doesn't mind him, it dies. If it does mind him, it continues to live. That intelligence. He's got to mind this intelligence. He said, well, that's just nature. I said, what is nature? I said, you mean just the... Uh, geographically and the rocking of the earth. I said, set a bucket of water out there on the post in the middle of August. Let's see, go down to the bottom of the post and then in springtime, come back up and have another bucket of water. I said, I won't do that. I said, well, then it's got to be some intelligence control in this. See. So I never thought of it just like that, but I guess you're right. I, I said, well, now when you find out what intelligence that tells that, that sap in that tree to go down in the root to hide to come back again and bring up something to benefit somebody, I'll tell you the same intelligence is what told me that that woman was laying over there dying with a cancer. If she'd obey the commandments of God, she'd be healed. He said, you're not that preacher. I said, I am. What's your name? I said, Branham. He said, that's the guy. Can you prove it? I said, well, I guess I could. And there under that apple tree, that simple little thing, life, I led him to Christ. Last year, I was down there again. I walked up to the tree, and the woman was sitting over behind there, his wife, peeling apples. I asked for him. He's gone on. She said, Mr. Branham, God ever be with you. She said, year after year, we tried. We'd done everything. But that simple little story about this apple tree brought him to Christ. So life is so simple. But yet it's so great. Let's just put what we got so that we'll have a resurrection someday. Not only us, let's bring forth somebody else with us when we come to that day. Is that all right? Can we pray? Heavenly Father, you've made life so simple, the way so simple, so plain. Let it be far from us to try to ever twist it in such a, a way to bring in our own, what we think, intelligence Let's just take the simplicity that God has placed before us. There, use that to win souls for Christ. Father God, we're here now. We're here opening this meeting. There's sinners all around here. I don't know who they are, where they are. Here I sit with men and women this morning that I believe that through the ceaseless ages to come that we'll live together. As we sat here this morning looking across the table one to another, I watched down along the line seeing gray-headed man who was probably on the field preaching when I was a sinner. We shook each other's hands. We fellowshiped around our breakfast. We may never meet at another breakfast. But there's one thing sure. We're going to meet at a supper someday. That's a wedding supper. And that great table is stretched across the skies, reaching from sky to sky. We look across the table one to another. There's bound to be a little tear drop from our cheeks as we think, as we shake each other's hands. Say, I remember the Salem meeting. Here's brother so-and-so. He is the one come in at that time, this and down here. Then the king and his beauty walk out in his white robes. Wipe all tears away from our eyes. They don't cry, children. It's all over. Enter into the joys of the Lord. It's been prepared for you since the foundation of the world. God, let us have many sitting around the table because of this effort that we're putting forth. Now, we'll do all we can, Lord. We're depending on you to help us. We're yours. We're in your hands, Lord. Do with us as you see fit. We thank you for the fellowship with one another. And with the Son of God, whose presence is with us now, may he ever remain, and may we ever remain faithful and true to the calling that we might go out, not in the power of money and the power of great things of the earth, but in the power of humility and sweetness and humbleness of the Spirit as he will make us and mold us 
into images of sons and daughters of God, that we might win others to Him. In Jesus' name, we ask this blessing to honor God. Amen. Thank you very kindly, friends. If you will, I'll, I'll pay your breakfast for you. I have this time of fellowship. I'll be glad to do it. We don't like to be stubborn. We don't like to do it that way. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll be glad to do it. See, I'll be happy to do it. I've certainly enjoyed being here and being with you. And now, until uh, I see you tonight, our brother, Chairman. Son.